Can you just explain briefly sort of the, the value of widgets and what yeah. the role that widgets play in this ecosystem of advertising and marketing? Great, great question. Um, so there's a lot of buzz around widgets, a lot of hype around widgets, and I think the reason for that is you have a couple of big paradigm shifts, right? You have all this distributed content where traditional publishers like Conde Nast and Hachette Philippe and NBC and Fox and everyone realizes it's no longer about hoarding their content and guarding it, it's about distributing it and allowing users to interact with their content or with their brand wherever that user chooses. And that's feeding into the social media space. Social media space, right, is any kind of UGCs, uh, social network, blog, uh, start page, significant percentage of the internet. And I think everyone is in agreement that traditional online advertising, graphical ads, AdSense, is basically failing in the social media space. So what's the correct play for a brand advertiser? What's the correct positioning for a brand in the social media space? We think it's widgets. Um, and widgets gives the brand the ability to get off of that kind of ad space and get into the content of the page, which is very promising. Get that user endorsement and that, that viral distribution that is so appealing. So what do you guys do? How do you exist in the widget ecosystem, sure. if you will? Uh, so Gigia is the leading widget distribution technology on the internet. Uh, according to Comscore, we're currently reaching 128 million uniques. We have over a thousand web publishers that currently use our wildfire technology, which on the front end is a, a very user-friendly interface that allows users to grab and install content into 50 plus destinations in the social media space. On the back end, we provide robust analytics for distributed content. So web publishers do a fairly good job today of seeing analytics on their own site, right? Um, there's Omniture, there's Dart, there's plenty of solutions that are giving them very granular uh, numbers and data on their site. But those technology providers didn't really plan for the, for the content to move off of the site. And so we kind of give them their night vision when their content becomes distributed. So we're currently tracking three billion widget impressions a month, installing close to half a million widgets per day in the social media space, so fairly scale. All right. We've also read a lot about uh, video widgets. Uh, we've covered what NetVibes has done, and, and we've sort of been looking at this. What are the opportunities for videos to be seen in, 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 on the widget platform? And uh, what are you guys doing, if you are? So I think video is just a type of content, therefore it's a type of widget. Um, consumption of video is a very popular activity in the social media space, and so therefore, I mean, there's great potential for video widgets. Um, there's also great monetization potential for video widgets once the social networks allow content producers to begin advertising inside of these widgets, which they're not yet, to tell you the truth. Right. For, for an episodic show, you know, right. how would it work? Yeah, so, I mean, a video, uh, excuse me, a, a widget, my definition of a widget it's just a piece of portable content, yeah, right? Yeah. Not to overcomplicate things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just uh, a piece of content that has code that's available to a user where they can take it from one location and port it to another location. And the great thing about a widget is that it's, it's like a mini browser. It's like a programmable television channel. Yeah. So as long as you as a content producer has a lot of content and access to new, refreshed, compelling content, there's no limit to the episodes that you can pipe in there. And that's a best practice for a widget, right? Because you constantly want to give a user a reason to continually interact with the widget, to keep it on their page, give them a reason to interact with your brand and with your content. So yeah, I mean, it's, that's definitely the best practice is if you're a video site and somebody downloads the video or the video player, with permission, you want to be able to refresh that video and give them more content that they're interested in and that they want to show to their friends.